In the relationship between men and machines, human error is a constant problem. But now a system has been designed to compensate for the most common causes of death and injury involving mobile plant. A machine to monitor the human workforce. A machine called Albert. Technically speaking, Albert stands for Analog Linear Bipolar Electronic Ranging Transducer. But Albert seems more friendly somehow. One man who's made good friends with Albert is Mike Hopkins, project manager of one of the most experienced civil engineering companies in the world. It just so happens that in our industry there are a great number of accidents which result in fatalities by equipment reversing over them. We have had a number of fatalities on our side three of which could have been avoided by the equipment that we currently got fitted to one of our 777s. First fatality we had on this site as a result of a rear dump reversing over the person was three years ago. We tried a number of mirrors fixed to our equipment to cut down the zones of blindness. The next thing we tried was a television camera fixed on the back of one of our large trucks. But these weren't wholly successful. There is no way with this equipment fixed to a back of a truck or any other equipment where a person can be run over by that vehicle reversing. The essence of the equipment is that not only is it a safety device, but it also has certain commercial advantages. But let me hasten to add, it was safety that was foremost in our mind. Let's start with an example of what Albert can do. Because of the size of the plant, one great problem is the driver's vision and awareness of other vehicles. In this situation, the driver is totally unaware of the car behind him. No warning, visual or audible, can communicate to the man high in the cab of the truck cut off by a wall of engine noise. Staged that. Uh -huh. I mean, what was the sensation? What did it feel like? I never felt a thing. You Just like I know a stone on the hull. Never even felt it. Didn't. No. Not so, a thing. So had that been for real, you wouldn't necessarily know that you'd done no. it. If I'd been in the dark, I wouldn't. I would have just carried on and went away. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known it was there. It took just one and a half seconds for the truck to obliterate the car in that reconstruction. In a number of accidents, men have lost their lives just as quickly, with no chance of escape. A Northumberland workman was killed today when the Land Rover he was driving was crushed by a truck. The accident happened at the Opencast mining site near Morpeth. Workmates saw the truck, used for shifting earth and rock on the site, reverse into and over the Land Rover. But the driver was dead before they could reach the spot. The Butterwell site is the biggest Opencast mine in Europe. An official inquiry into the accident is to start tomorrow. In a matter of hours, it's possible to equip the driver of a giant truck with eyes in the back of his head. This vehicle has been fitted with Albert. In this situation, Albert has taken the controls, applied the brakes and warned the driver that there's an emergency. Albert's ability to detect a collision risk is just one of his functions, of course. The system works through a pre-programmed microprocessor unit attached to the vehicle. It monitors a number of ranging devices, sensors and control mechanisms. Four of these scanners, housed in shockproof steel casing, are sighted on the rear of the vehicle. 
When reverse gear is engaged, one of these scanners automatically transmits a signal over the danger area behind and simultaneously to an adjacent receiver. Any obstacle reflects a changed pulse on the signal, which is detected by the receiver. Albert calculates the obstacle's size and distance and its closing speed in relation to the reversing truck. And automatic controls bring the truck to a controlled stop to avoid collision. The driver is warned by an emergency horn and flashing light in the cab. He can only cancel the alarm by selecting neutral gear, applying the brake and pushing the cancel button. If he should reselect reverse gear before the obstacle has been removed, he triggers the alarm again. In reverse gear, two more of the rear scanners are looking for human beings. A person anywhere in the danger area behind the reversing truck instantly triggers the same emergency controls, full brake pressure and the warning horn. Whenever the movement of heavy plant has to be directed by men on the ground, as with this tipping process, it's obvious that Albert can act as a guardian angel to the men positioned behind the trucks. The driver cannot reverse on them unawares. And meanwhile, Albert is monitoring the entire tipping process. The fourth of the rear scanners is placed higher to survey the ground 20 feet from the back wheels as the lorry reverses. If the ground falls away more than four feet, as at a tip edge, the brakes are automatically applied at a predetermined distance, sooner if the speed warrants it, and again with full emergency warning. safety during the tipping operation, Albert also automatically bypasses the front wheel brake cutout as soon as reverse gear is selected. The driver is reminded that he's operating with brakes on four wheels by a light in the cab reading front brakes armed. When he selects forward gear again, the brakes revert to the prior setting. Albert prevents human error by ensuring that the skip lever is locked until the truck is in neutral gear and full brake pressure is applied. And once the skip is raised, reverse gear cannot be selected. Nor can the driver accelerate away with the skip raised. During tipping, the vehicle can move forward six meters. Then a warning sounds in the cab. If the driver continues forward for another five meters, without lowering the skip, the vehicle's brakes come on automatically. The weight of the load in this size of vehicle brings a risk to the balance, particularly if the load sticks. To minimize this risk, another sensor checks the gradient of the lateral slope and the skip lever remains locked so that tipping is impossible if the slope is unsafe. Not only does Albert watch over safety procedure, because he regularizes the operation on the site, he helps to limit fuel consumption and reduces tire and engine wear. For instance, Albert's transducer counts the engine speed to a preset safe limit. In this case, 2,400 revs per minute. If the revs exceed this, the retarder is immediately triggered to 30%. After five seconds, to 60% and in eight seconds to 90%. This quickly brings the engine revs to a safe level and only then can the driver release the retarder. Obviously this control is particularly important when vehicles are traveling downhill and the momentum can override the governor causing the engine to over rev with disastrous consequences at times. Speed control on the site is essential for safety, but also contributes to fuel saving and tyre efficiency when braking and skidding are kept to a minimum. Drivers working on bonus rates are only human. 
literally cutting corners, can lead at worst to disaster, and in any event, to uneconomical wear and tear on the vehicles. With Albert, a general sight speed limit can be set on each vehicle. Albert simply applies the engine retarder when the road speed exceeds the limit. To reduce that speed limit further on any particularly hazardous stretch of road, a corner or a steep slope, for example, roadside beacons can be installed. These can reduce the vehicle's speed further to 20, 15, 10 or even 5 miles per hour. But this localised limit can be cancelled by another roadside beacon after the hazard, allowing the driver to accelerate again up to the general sight speed limit. Albert's contribution to safety and efficiency is detailed and comprehensive. But the sophistication of this control system does not present a problem to any site's existing workforce. Fitting Albert to a vehicle is a simple process. Installation of the six control boxes is carried out by experienced engineers within a matter of hours. Once operational, the system is not designed to be serviced on the site, only replaced by new, complete units. If Albert were to fail, he would fail safe. And four lights in the cabin would immediately put the driver in the picture. They read, safety system malfunction. No reverse gear. Report to workshops. And in addition, the number of the box where the fault is located. Repair is simply a matter of replacing that box with a spare unit of the same type. The loss of reverse gear as a safety precaution can only be cancelled for practical purposes by the use of the foreman's master key, so that the vehicle can reverse into the workshops, for example. When the site's electrician has replaced the faulty unit, a job which can be done as quickly as changing a light bulb, he can carry out a comprehensive check on the system with the simulator panel. This panel includes duplicate control buttons and a warning system, so that he can check overspeed and over revs. For instance, he can simulate an emergency, like driving forward with the skip still up, to see if the proper controls are brought into play. George, as you have more experience than any other driver on this particular system, can you give me your views on it? Well, uh, in our opinion, Albert contributes to uh, safety, it takes a lot of the worry away from the driver. It's safer on a tipping area when you know that you haven't got to rely on uh, your mirrors and your own eyesight, that you know you're not going to run anybody over in reverse. We have reached a stage where we're completely happy with the production type equipment and the order has been placed to equip all 52 of our dump trucks on this site with this same equipment. Later on in the year, we shall be developing it or other equipment on the sites, even to the extent of fixing this equipment to the back of Land Rovers and other small site transporting units.
from a distance, an open cast site gives no clue to the dangers involved for the men who work there. With Albert watching over this operation, many of those dangers will cease to exist.